Welcome, Welcome to Wales Tech, to Wales Tech Week 2021. Thank you Thank to you our partners. To Enjoy the session. Enjoy the session. Well, good afternoon. Thank you very much for joining us at Wales Tech Week here today. Um, it's our pleasure to be part of this exciting week. Uh, my name's Lisa. I'm from Careers Wales. And joining me today is Anna Webb from Third Space. Hi, Anna. Hi, Lisa. Uh, thank you so much for being with us today. Um, Anna, you're here today to tell us a lot more about careers in the technology um, sector. And uh, we're really excited to find out a lot more about recruitment skills and your personal journey as well. So maybe you'd like to start off by introducing us to Third Space, telling us a little bit more about the company and what your current job role is, please. Absolutely. Thanks, Lisa. So um, I'm, as you can see, I'm Anna Webb and I'm head of SOC or Security Operations Centre at Third Space. Um, we're a company that specialise in identity management and security. So we support our clients with ensuring that their infrastructure and their applications, websites, etc., are secure um, and safe from hackers and people who are trying to steal their information basically oh lovely um Anna what kind of roles would you say that there are in the tech sector um there's quite a wide variety of roles in the tech sector um people think of tech as being somebody who sits in front of a, a pc or laptop day in day out um coding or googling things etc but there's a lot more to it than that you have things like um, database administrators people who look after the back end data um, you have things like um, administrators you have people on help desks who take initial calls uh, you have second third line engineers who um, work on people's servers and they sort of ensure that the infrastructure is up and running you've got people who work on application development software development there really is a massive range of roles within the tech sector that's great it sounds like there's such a wide variety so um it would suit many different types of pupils or people interested in going into that sector as well. And whereabouts are the tech jobs most advertised? So um, what I've found through my own sort of search in careers is that um, the majority of, of tech roles are advertised online. So websites such as Indeed, um, CW Jobs, then specifically on sort of recruiters websites so you've got people like cps who are based in cardiff there's into people they're always very good for recruiting um tech roles they have different departments and things but also you find that uh, linkedin is another area where um you you can you know you can set up a job search and you can be notified if you're looking for specific roles so if you've got keywords like support or um server engineer or whatever you will find that there's you know particular roles that you can search for on linkedin uh, so there is you know a wide variety really of areas to be able to search for those roles and companies themselves will also advertise directly on their own websites there's usually um, a careers page or tab if you look uh, you know if you go directly to the company's website so yeah variety of areas really to to look for those roles thank you and you mentioned linkedin um do you have any tips for uh younger people wanting to start out in this sector on what to include maybe on their linkedin profile yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's it's difficult when you've, um, you know, when you're just sort of in school or just leaving school because, you know, you're coming out with maybe GCSEs, A-levels, AS levels, possibly some kind of vocational qualification if you've um, gone to sixth form college. Um, make sure you display 
those sort of things on there, you know, fill out your profile as much as you possibly can. Um, include areas of interest, you know, what 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 are you doing at home? Are you sort of interested in tech at home? Are you doing your own research? Are you doing your own um, upskilling and sort of knowledge, uh, sort of reading stuff online? Um, a lot of the guys I work with, they, they do something called Hack the Box, which uh, you can get into online. It's quite easy. Sign up for it. And it it's a way of um, sort of getting yourself into being able to um, do sort of penetration testing and, and that sort of thing. It allows you to test your skills to see um, what areas you you know you need to develop in, but also includes any sort of um, voluntary work that you're doing, any work experience, because that can really really benefit you. I mean, don't think just because you haven't worked in the tax sector that um, you know that sort of precludes you from being able to apply for roles or, you know, will will stop you being picked up by a prospective employer. Yeah, I think um, what a lot of employers are looking for in people's work experience maybe are the transferable skills that they pick up too as well, aren't there? So we'll talk a little bit more about skills later on. Um, thank you for the information on where they're all advertised as well. Um, do you think recruitment methods have changed then recently, especially now we've gone into a more online kind of facing um, methods? So what kind of interview techniques would your company and possibly other tech companies use? Yeah, so I definitely agree that um, interview techniques have changed considerably, particularly over the last 12 months with um, sort of coronavirus and COVID-19. Um, if I take you back to when I first um, applied for roles, not necessarily in tech, but my first, one of my very first interviews was for um, a role at St. Fagan's Museum as a as a warder. So, it, like I say, it wasn't tech, um, and it was a part time job. But I still had a panel of six people, and I walked into this huge room, and there were six people sat behind a desk at one, one end of the room, and then there's this chair that's placed in the middle of the room, and I'm sort of, you know. 20 sat on this chair thinking oh my gosh how scary is this employers today and particularly third space they don't want that experience for staff coming in we want to understand who you are um for instance my advent into third space started with um a 30 minute conversation with the guy who's now my manager or my my director in a coffee shop in cardiff because it was a very, very relaxed environment. It allowed him to see my personality um, rather than being sort of uptight and worried about it. You know, we didn't discuss my CV. We just talked about the, the company, talked about what I was doing, talked about what he was doing. And similarly, um, the second interview was very much the same with the next sort of level of management down. And typically you do have two or three or more sometimes interviews with, with different levels of management. Um, and that was very relaxed as well. And that was more sort of talking around the ideas that they had for the security operations center. How did I feel about that? What could I bring to the table? And then my final interview, um, which actually happened not long after lockdown started last March, uh, was to present over Teams um, my present. It was a ten-minute presentation on what I thought was the secret sauce to um, make my sock team zing. That was the ex exact title. So I think employers these days are trying to make it much more fun and much more interactive. They're trying to bring out the personality of those applying for the roles and going for the interviews, not just focusing in on their technical ability technical ability at the end of the day you can have a ground in and have a technical ability but we can teach tech it's much easier to teach tech than it is to teach personal skills and transferable skills some great tips there thank you very much Anna um we mentioned that people don't have that much work experience when they're first starting out as well um, in terms of CVs, would you advise putting similar information on that in terms of um, work experience as well? What, how do you make your CV stand out? 
yeah absolutely don't don't think because you haven't worked in tech in any way shape or form that you know you don't have the skills you need to get into the industry um if you've done a paper round if you've worked in mcdonald's if you've worked in your local tesco's or morrison's um, i'm using these examples because these are ones that i've seen come through on cvs for people who've applied for internships before um there are elements within those roles that we will pick up on as uh, recruiters but from your perspective you know if, if you've if you've held a job in any way, shape or form, even if that is just delivering papers for your local news agents, you've had to get up at a certain time. You've had to, you know, get yourself to the shop. You've had to pick up the papers. You've got the responsibility of delivering those papers. Um, you can talk about uh, how you've, you know, managed yourself from a time perspective with that. You know, did you have 30 papers to deliver over what sort of space uh how many miles you know was it a small area large area and it's just the determination to get up and do that so that you can earn a little bit of pocket money is great if you've worked somewhere like um tesco's or morrison's which areas have you worked in did you work on the meat counter did you work behind you know behind the scenes um sort of re restocking shelves or making sure that stock was aligned there's all sorts of features to these roles that you can bring um, to a job within the tech industry because they are transferable skills. Um, working with people, working face to face with customers. I mean, mm -hmm. I'm sure that, you know, working in Tesco's, you, you're going to come across a variety of different people who have different questions, different needs. Um, you know, try and find examples as well where you've, you know, provided good service or maybe had praise for good service um yeah it's it's you know it, it's one of those things you can do my my first sort of foray into the working world I worked for my uncle because mm -hmm. he had his own engineering company I was basically the tea girl but I learned to type I learned to do invoicing I learned to do um payroll yeah so and understand those sort of things so i was able to put those down on my cv so if you've done any work experience with a family member if you're lucky enough to have somebody who's you know got um their own company even if it's just a bit of filing or um mm. running around with them or whatever then you know put that down you've done something thank you yeah great tips there um it brings us nicely on to the other types of skills as well you know there are a lot of transferable skills you've mentioned there already about working with customers and some of the practical elements people might pick up in other jobs um what kind of soft skills or um maybe hard skills are you looking for when you see applicants apply for jobs i think if i start with the the sort of more technical element then um if if somebody's sort of straight out of school or straight out of college, straight out of university, um, we're looking for that passion really for the subject. So if you've done any um, any of your own study in your own time, if you've built like a home network, if you've done any sort of online courses, if you've done any things like hack the box, we're looking for that sort of interest in the subject, you know? Yeah. Um, from a soft skills perspective, the ability to communicate. It doesn't matter if you get a bit nervous, that's fine. But as long as you can hold a conversation, you can respond, um, then that is really, really important. Um, in your CV, how you structure your CV, the, the sort of way that you write about yourself as well. They always say that you should write your CV in the third person. So if you do like the overall um, sort of personal profile at the top, write it in the third person you know so you sort of yeah. talk about yourself um but without saying me or i yeah uh -huh. um and that, and you know pull out those really good things like yes you are a good communicator one of the things we really look for is um sort of empathy with others as well particularly in client facing roles but also um being sort of emotionally savvy as well so being mm -hmm. able to control your emotion in a, a business setting in a in a sort of work setting it's not always easy and it's something that you can learn and you do learn over time you know not reacting because 
somebody said something to you that you may not um, find very nice or very pleasant, these things happen. It's how to then respond to that in a calm, collected way and sort of say, um, you know, I, I don't particularly appreciate the way you've spoken to me there, mm -hmm. but let's see if we can address this, you know, it, rather than going, well, I don't think you should be talking to me like that. You know, it's it's having that emotional maturity. It is a difficult one, yeah. but it's something I think that as you're coming out of school, you come in, you know, you coming out of university, you can work on. Mm -hmm. um, you've been in different situations with friends and things. Think about how you've reacted to the way that they've done something and think about well is there a better way that I could have reacted to it could I have not reacted to it could I've just gone yeah let it go over the top of my head type of thing it's just having that ability to take the step back take a breath and go right how are we going to deal with this and that's how you deal with clients so lovely would you say that um people coming from maybe like creative sectors or other kind of sectors wanting to transfer into technology, do they bring this particular skill set with them as well? Do they match up? Yeah, I think so. I, I don't think anybody should be put off um, coming into the tech sector if their background is creative. Um, there are a lot of uh, patterns and um, sort of areas around creativity that can be transferred to tech for instance part of the role that we do is in the SOC is to actually look at patterns yeah so we know that something happens daily all the time and what we're looking for is that change yeah so being able to spot that one thing it might be small being able to spot that one thing that stands out from the norm Mm. That is, you know, there's subtle differences. And I think people with creative minds can, they think outside the box as well. So they, they're able to see things differently. So they may be able to pick up on these patterns um, quite easily. I, anybody can turn their hand to tech. Um, I did. I, you know, I, I didn't start out in tech. So, yeah, I truly believe that, you know, it, it shouldn't be a limitation at all. Fabulous. Um it's an ideal time also for maybe you to share a little bit about your career journey, you know, um, from school into this sector as well, because um, I know you've got an interesting story to tell. And I'm sure that pupils and parents would be like um, interested to hear that, too. It wasn't necessarily a traditional route, was it, Anna? No, it certainly wasn't. Um, like I just said, my I didn't start out in tech. Um, I was bought my first computer when I was eight my uncle had this big vision that um, you know computers were the thing of the future mm -hmm. so he bought me an Amstrad which yeah I potted with and I did a bit of programming there was a book that came with it you just followed the instructions and that was fine um, my heart was really set on being an engineer but then I changed my mind halfway through my a uh, through my GCSEs and decided I was going to do travel and tourism mm -hmm. so um I went on to do uh, economics and French, and I did a bit of Spanish as well for A-level. Didn't finish my Spanish A-level, unfortunately, because it just was a little bit too much. I was doing it at night school rather than in school. Mm -hmm. um, so I came out with um, two below par A-level, shall we say, <laughs> and not a good enough grade to go and do travel and tourism at the university that I wanted to go to. So my mother promptly marched me to the careers office and said give this girl a job and the only jobs that were going were cleaning offices or cleaning toilets neither of which that I wanted to do particularly but there was a big um, sign up in the careers office that said do computing at the University of Glamorgan which these days is the University of South Wales I was like right so what do I need to do that and the lady said oh um five G five GCSEs and two A-levels and I was like oh well, that's okay because I've got five GCSEs and two A-levels. Um, so she said, yeah, no problem, you can sign up. So off I went to do um, a higher national diploma, not a degree, um, at the University of Glamorgan in Trafforest. Mm -hmm. And I did two years, thoroughly enjoyed it, met some lovely people who I have actually bumped into um, later on in my career mm -hmm. journey they've sort of popped up in different companies that I've I've worked for um but the 
the biggest thing for me was um, in my last in my last year, you you still do a, um, a end of you know end of diploma project, about the same as you do a thesis with a degree. And my end of year tutor said to me, he said, "What did you want to do originally?" I said, "Oh, travel and tourism." He said, "Well, if you ask me, he said you will never amount to anything." Mm-hmm. in the IT sector he said so I'd go back to travel and tourism so I'm like mm-hmm. right I'm going to show you mate <laughs> not too encouraging. yeah so yeah so I, I it took me took me about nine months to get my first IT job um, which was on a help desk for um, British Airways maintenance in Cardiff and I I'd done some programming as part of my course in university. So they're like, all right, okay, well, we've got some programming that needs doing. So I started doing that. Then I started to learn about um, Microsoft and I started learning about Windows and DOS and building um, desktops and things like that. And I've just gone from strength to strength, really. So, Oh, brilliant. And I know um, you joined your current role on quite a specific date as well, didn't you? Yes, I did. I joined Third Space on the 4th of May. Um, for those of you who are unaware, 4th of May is also known as Star Wars Day because may the 4th be with you. Yeah, so, yes. <laughs> I love that part of your story. That's great. Well, we've got a few questions that we've been sent in as well and are coming in from um, schools across Wales, Anna. So if I could put a few of those to you as well. If anybody else does want to ask more questions, just chat the Type them into the chat box and we'll get through as many as we can too. Um, You've touched upon this a little bit, but we had a question that's come in to say, what kind of roles do you recruit into that would be suitable for a school leaver? So a lot of um, a lot of roles for school leavers tend to be uh, sort of entry level roles, maybe apprenticeships, maybe sort of internships. Um, And, you know, that could be in my department that could be in any of the other departments really that um, are offering it within third space we have had people come in um, and sort of you know develop with us particularly in the support area so IT support we've had sort of um, staff that have have started off uh, at an entry level and then they've sort of graduated up to um, you know, fully fledged support analyst. And yeah, it's just great to see people coming through that that way. And a lot of companies do that as well. A lot of companies have these sort of um, entry level programs then. Fabulous. And would they involve apprenticeships as well? Are there, is that part of the tech sector too? Yeah, absolutely. There's apprenticeships, there's internships. So um, depending on which, you know, companies you look at, Um, there's a lot of them that offer a variety if you're starting out from just leaving school after a levels or whatever or college to whether you're you know graduated because there's a lot that offer graduation schemes internships tend to be um, that sort of three six twelve month period um, if you're doing a degree and you you know you're off for the summer or whatever but Yeah. yeah there's there's a lot available fantastic thank you do you think there are quite few opportunities for promotion and development in the tech sector? Do people move around within the industry, maybe between a particular um, from cyber to data, maybe? Yeah, that you can move. You're not. You're not the only person. The only limitation is yourself. Um, you're not pigeonholed to a particular sector within tech or a particular area. For instance, I I started off. On the help desk, I went into desktop support. I then went into um, server engineering support, and from there, I've sort of gone into um, management. I've gone into service delivery. So yeah, they've you know I've moved across different areas. Really, it depends what your aspirations are. You can move between networking and um, sort of infrastructure because you know network sort of sits under or it surrounds infrastructure if you learn about networking um then you know there's nothing to say you can't move out of infrastructure and become a networking subject matter subject matter expert type of thing but there's also areas that you know like service delivery management for instance which is where you are the interface between the tech team 
supporting the infrastructure and the client and it's having that ability to be able to talk tech one side but then be able to talk in layman's terms the other side and bring them both together it's having that really really good collaborative skill set to enable the two sides to understand each other you know that's really important so yeah there, there's such a variety of things that you can go into you're not pigeonholed so thank you um, do you think there are any particular skills shortages in the industry? Cyber, for one, and security. Um, basically, cyber at the moment is an industry where I was part of the tech industry where there is zero unemployment because there is such a high demand for people with um, cyber security, forensic, um, and those types of skills. So, um, I think there's always going to be a shortage for the time being. There's more and more universities um, and colleges that are off offering uh, cyber based qualifications, which allow people to get a flavor, to get into that sort of arena. And more and more people are becoming aware of it. So they're maybe doing online uh, training themselves or sort of um, skilling up at home. Um, so it, you know, it is it is improving but currently that is that is where the the shortages are i know from recruiting myself that it's you know having people with those skills um is quite difficult and having people um who have got because you also ask for sort of either unix or linux skills and microsoft skills it's having a good cross match of those is also difficult on times as well because people tend to if they're if they're linux they're linux if they're windows they're windows you know it never yeah. the twain shall meet generally so okay so potentially something that's developed further along in your career or as your interests you know vary and you go into different yeah. types of um technology thank you um this is always a popular question too uh, what are the wage bands like in the tech sector um they vary quite considerably i will say um probably for entry level you can look at anything at the moment um around about sort of 20 to 25 depending on which sector you're going into um cyber is typically entry level of 25 um but yeah they go right up it depends whether you decide to be an architect a consultant if you go into management but they you know they are um the the wage bands the, you know they're vast but the wages are very very good in the tech sector and cyber particularly at the moment is commanding some of the high higher wages um support maybe not so much it's usually when people get to about 35 in support it's very difficult to push past that ceiling um because there needs you need to specialize a little bit more maybe mm -hmm. um and usually when you get to that point you either continue to be technical and then move into sort of doing um technical design architect or um something like that or consultancy or you go the other way and you move into sort of team lead and then up to management so you sort of branch off depending on what you want to do so the does seem to be or they did last year seem to be quite a lot of um availability of staff in that area um and maybe not as many roles available i'm just talking from um what i've seen on sort of recruitment websites and things yeah. like that but it's quite easy if you've got the right skills in the sort of support and infrastructure sector it's quite easy to sort of get yourself into the cyber sector because we can teach security um you can learn about security there's plenty of resources online and that will allow you then to maybe you'd have to maybe move into a more entry level role um but it is possible to move across yeah now i can imagine people in the support sector in it at the moment are rushed off their feet and have had huge demands placed on them as well Absolutely, yeah. The the whole COVID nineteen thing, the working from home, um, people who've not maybe had so much uh, tech at home, needing yeah. more tech at home. Mm -hmm. People who've never worked from home, never owned a laptop, or never had a laptop as part of their working 
kit. Yeah. Um, they've always used a desktop. It's like, yeah, they've now got to, you know, get on at home, get them set up on the broadband, get them linked in. They use things like um, virtual private networks, uh, multi-factor authentication. It's all just like one big learning curve for a lot of people. So, yeah, um, support have been rushed off their feet, I'm sure. Yeah, definitely. And um, that was related to a question that's come in as well. Um, obviously, the pandemic has changed a lot, hasn't it, for people in this sector? And I think we've all picked up, you know, new skills, of learned new software, um, a lot more advanced in our digital skills than before. So in some ways, that has been a benefit, you know, that's come out of having to work from home or to change the way we work in schools as well and colleges. Yeah, absolutely. One of the questions that has come in has been to ask, do you think there are new kind of jobs that have come out in the data sector or in the technology sector because of the pandemic? Yeah, I think so. Um, particularly sort of maybe around like uh, things like the NHS. Um, mm. I think they've maybe um, needed more support for staff in doctor surgeries and things like that. Because obviously, you know, a, a lot of places that have been slower in bringing tech in to improve what they're doing for clients and for, um, you know, the general public, they've they've now had to ramp that up. So things like councils, NHS, typically public sector areas um, have been slightly slower on the uptake with certain types of tech. So, yeah, so there's been, I think there's been more roles um, developed in those areas where, you know, for instance, you've got the e-consult um, that most GP surgeries are using now to try and, you know, drive down the number of phone calls they're getting yeah. and sort of make it easier for doctors to see patients virtually um, and make a diagnosis before, you know, rather than having them sort of sat in the surgery because we just can't sit in surgeries and wait now for the appointments. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, I, I definitely say there's, there's sort of roles that have been established more maybe, um, support and administrator roles that have come out as a result of the demands that those areas have have placed on the tech that's been you know installed and things and training as well for staff yeah. you know I, I would think the training side of tech has probably increased um, whereas maybe previously a lot of that had fallen to training online or whatever so there's yeah, probably more point this sort of face-to-face -face learning over over teams or whatever so yeah yes fabulous thank you um you mentioned your personal story before and that shows um that there are different sort of ways of getting into the career so you don't necessarily have to um have the right grade straight off you know once you finish school to get into the sector so any tips for somebody that might find themselves in that position yeah, the, the the biggest thing really from my perspective is don't panic. Um, mm. There are ways and means. Um, get in touch with your local college. Um, look on LinkedIn. Reach out to people. Like you know, come to events like this. Sign up for events like this. And if you see somebody like myself, um, then you know, feel free to sort of get in contact on LinkedIn. I've had quite a few um, students who've sort of reached out on LinkedIn after they've seen me um, sort of doing events or whatever, mainly with the university, but, um, and sort of asked, you know, for support and sort of guidance on how maybe they can um, look for different roles, um, areas where they could do training, you know, what what's the best sort of, um, place to get information from where can I skill up is there any sort of training courses you can recommend that sort of thing it's it's like don't be afraid to do your research and ask yeah. um you know it doesn't it doesn't have to be somebody like me it can be your local careers officer I don't know how those work in schools these days but um yeah just you know there will always be somebody who will be willing to support you I I did a lot of it myself because um, my parents weren't really, they, they were both teachers and all they knew was the academic side of things. So I, I sort of had to go out on my own and do my own research. But um, I had enough knowledge that I was like, right, I'm just going to get in contact with a recruitment agency and I'll speak to them mm -hmm. and I'll see what I need to do. And, and this is the thing. There's a lot of these recruitment agencies that will help you. 
mm. to build your CV. They'll help you pull out those elements that you may have and put them on your CV so you can stand out and, and make it a lot better. You know, even if you haven't got the um, qualifications quite that you, you, you know, you need to do what you wanted to do. Yeah, that's true. And you mentioned um, careers advisors there, like everybody will in schools across Wales will have a careers advisor for their school. So it's also worth finding out who your careers advisor is. Um, look for more information on careerswales.com as well. Uh, there's a great range of information there for people. And there's always somebody there ready to help too. So whatever your situation is, there is a way forward too. Um, Quite a couple more questions to fit in shortly before we end then, Anna. Um, you mentioned um, a lot of interviewing is being taken, is taking place, sorry, you know, digitally and online as well. Do you do telephone interviews, video interviews as well? Yeah, video interviews predominant. I prefer video interviews but we will do telephone interviews as well I, I like to see the candidate that I'm that I'm talking to how you conduct yourself on video as well is really important so <clears throat> always you know if you can obviously sometimes there's limitations with bandwidth on your broadband mm -hmm. or whatever but always turn your camera on um, try and have a plain background you know don't have sort of you know leftover pizza boxes or whatever sat on the coffee table behind you try not to do it in a bedroom if you can help it um, obviously try and do it in a quiet place um, if you you know if you find that um, where you are is a little bit noisy then try and use headphones um, that always helps and whereas people sort of you know things have gone a bit more casual since we've been working from home um, yeah try and look sort of smart you know it, it doesn't necessarily mean shirt and tie but if you feel more comfortable wearing a shirt and tie certainly do that it's always worth it if you are undertaking um an interview to ask what the sort of dress code is of the company okay. um beforehand i i used to work for um another company based in cardiff and they had a very very lax dress code and they would tell interviewees look if you're coming in do not you don't need to wear a suit, just come how you feel comfortable. Typically people would still come smartly dressed. Yeah. And that and that's and that's good. But they ultimately wanted people to feel comfortable in the environment and feel comfortable in themselves. And sometimes if you're all suited and booted, you feel a little bit uptight. So having, you know, wearing sort of more comfortable clothes is better. But you know, do dress smart, do ask that question. If you especially if you're going through a recruiter, whether that's yeah. internal to the company or a recruitment agency, yeah, make sure that you ask that question. What, you know, can you give me some guidance on what I should wear? Um and you know, take your time. Everyone gets nervous. I get nervous. I still get nervous these days, right? I've I've been doing this for donkey's years, but it's a case of take your time. If you find yourself getting a little bit het up, just take a step back, take a breath, compose yourself, and then start again. It's not a problem at all. So, you know, at the end of the day, interviews as well work both ways. Yeah. It's the company interviewing you, but you're also interviewing the company. Um, you want to make sure that they are the type of people that you want to go and work for. So always have some questions prepared. If you Google online, um, you know, top 10 questions to ask when I'm being interviewed or something yeah. like that, they'll give you some examples. And um, it's always worth always worth having those questions to hand, even if it's just one or two. Mm -hmm. um, and not necessarily, right, how much is the salary and how many days off do I get? Because uh, <laughs> they are the typical ones. But, you know, ask ask questions about, you know, where do you see the company in five years? Where yeah. do you see yourself in five years? You know, that's, that's a question that's usually asked to the person being interviewed. But ask the person who's interviewing you that question. Why, you know, it shows that they've A, thought about it, B, there's succession planning in place, which means that you can move between roles. And C, um, it means that that person is thinking about wanting to stay with that company for the next five years, which should give you a good feeling about, you know, how they look after their staff. Yeah, and I imagine it always helps as well. You know, if you can tell that somebody's done a little bit of research about the company before they've gone into their interview as well, and if they can bring some of that knowledge out into their... Yeah 
interview it helps too yeah um, you mentioned people asking questions back as well would you say there are a group of questions that you uh, use generically you know most popular questions that you would ask in an interview of somebody um yeah there's there's usually um tech related questions yeah so some of those can be very specific like can you tell me what port 443 is um which is https um but there's other questions then sort of um around you know uh tell me about a time where you were in a difficult situation, what that difficult situation was and how you handled it. Obviously that would be tailored more towards each candidate. You know, it might be um, if they've already got work experience uh, in the tech industry, it'd be sort of, you know, tell me about a difficult time with a client and how you remediated that. Um, but with somebody who's maybe not got that tech industry experience, we'd sort of draw out, um, we'd look at their CV and we would draw out um, a question around that, that they could potentially answer. Um, so for instance, if you've worked in Morrison's, go back to that scenario again, um, tell me about a time where, you know, you had a, a difficult customer in, in the store and how that was handled type of thing. You know, what did you do to, to sort of put the situation right? Um, there's other, there's other questions that we tend to throw at people as well, and they're sort of fairly common across um, interview techniques these days, which is um, you're in a lift with somebody and you've got 30 seconds to tell me everything you know about the company. So that's one of them. Yeah. Um, or you're in a lift with somebody and you've got 30 seconds to sell the company to this person you know what what's really good about it so th yeah. this is pulling out that research that That's you should have done yeah. yeah yeah um there's there's other sort of more bizarre questions that we ask which is more around um choosing cultural fit and things like that so it's you know how do you how do you deal and how do you deal with stress how do you manage under stress what do you do to relax what do you do outside of work or what do you do in your free time what's your hobbies and interests they're mm -hmm. always typical and I really like to see people who have got hobbies and interests mm. not just sitting in my room gaming because you know that's fine I, I get it but we want people cultural fits important and we want people who, who are happy to interact as well so fabulous thank you um a good question has come in on uh, networking so are there any particular networking sites or groups that um people can join to try and chat to other people within the industry maybe gain a little bit of experience that way as well yeah linkedin is the best as far as um i've seen and then there's all sorts of um sort of small groups on there that sort of spur off as well but um i would definitely use LinkedIn as an initial sort of jumping off point really and and joining any sort of um, events like this there will always be you know some sort of group that comes out of it I've done a um, women in in tech or women in STEM recently and um, the girls involved have actually set up their own sort of uh, girls in cyber group because there is a women in cyber group which um i'm involved with but yeah they they're sort of you know they've developed that and those sort of things um are really really good to keep an eye out for okay thank you well i really do appreciate all the useful tips and information you've given today that's such a wealth of little gems for people working or wanting to work in the sector too so i appreciate you taking part today anna thank you very much for your time um, just wanted to say before we close now a quick thank you to um, Technology Connected in enjoy, uh, inviting us to be part of Wales Tech Week this week and thank you to everybody that's watching today too so bye bye from me uh, at Careers Wales and thanks Anna. Thank you very much, pleased to be here. Bye. Bye bye. <laughs>